This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. The IKEA Business Network is now open for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Join for free today to get access to interior design services to help you make the most of your workspace, employee well-being benefits to help you and your people grow, and amazing discounts on travel, insurance, and IKEA purchases, deliveries, and more. Take your small business to the next level when you sign up for the IKEA Business Network for free today by searching IKEA Business Network. This is Optimal Work Daily, episode 1387, Seven Minimalist Tips for Freelancers by Rebecca Crespo of MinimalismMadeSimple.com. And I am Dan, I'm your host of the show and a very happy Thursday to you if you're listening in real time. And let's get into this post now from a brand new contributor to the site, Rebecca Crespo. And afterwards, I'll tell you more about uh, Rebecca and her site. But for now, let's hear the post and optimize your life. Seven Minimalist Tips for Freelancers by Rebecca Crespo of MinimalismMadeSimple.com. When you're a freelancer, it can be tempting to go all in and work crazy hours to build up your following and earn a living. You may find that you're spreading yourself thin, trying to master all skill sets, and working around the clock to build your brand. If this sounds like you, it's important to think about how minimalism can apply to your life as a freelancer. The word minimalism tends to get tossed around in contexts where it refers to getting rid of belongings you don't need or buying less stuff and avoiding a materialistic worldview. However, it is also possible to apply minimalism to freelancing, though that may seem like more of a stretch. If you are feeling overwhelmed, listen on to learn our minimalist tips for freelancers. Seven minimalist tips for freelancers. One, adopt digital minimalism. Digital minimalism refers to your presence on all the different social media platforms that are now available to mankind. As you know, it's not just Facebook anymore. There are tons of social media platforms to keep up with, and those numbers are only increasing. As a minimalist, it's important to not let yourself get overwhelmed by trying to build a social media presence on every possible outlet, especially when you're using up time and energy that could and should be devoted to working on your assignments and providing a quality service to your clients. Social media can be a powerful tool, but it's not number one in your business. This is a freelance tip in which balance is of the utmost importance. Two, don't go crazy with tools. There exists an endless supply of widgets, apps, and tools that are marketed predominantly to the self-employed. As helpful as these different tools may seem, they can just as easily become overwhelming when accumulated in excess. This is a trap that's easy to fall into but one of the big freelance tips is to focus on honing your skills and mastering your craft before you spend money on things like virtual assistants or go crazy with outsourcing. After all, it takes time to learn these new systems and routines, and some of that time can be much better spent working on your projects directly. As your business grows, you can assess and discern your needs and scale your use of apps and tools accordingly. Three, stay focused on the task at hand. The mind can wander in thousands of directions at once, and when you're a freelancer, it can be very tempting to multitask. When you venture down a rabbit hole, it can be very easy to lose track of what you're working on. Part of the minimalist lifestyle is to focus on one task at a time. Sometimes this means designating a window of time when you will not be checking your phone or your email, and all you will focus on is the project that needs your attention. This will be a challenging adjustment at first, but it is great for productivity, not to mention it flows with the minimalist mentality. Four, don't forget gratitude. Part of the minimalist lifestyle is always remembering to be grateful for what you have and for what you've accomplished and not relying on the mentality of more. Gratitude can have significant effects on your emotional and physical health. And there are scientific findings that gratitude is associated with psychological health, improving mental strength and capacity, and increasing empathy. First of all, be grateful that you are a freelancer. It's awesome to take the leap to be self-employed. And this requires not only creativity, but also ambition and bravery. That alone is something to be grateful for. Five, be okay with earning less. If you're a freelancer, it means you favor the creative over the conventional. You wanna do what you love, even if it means having to hustle as you search for your niche and your clientele. 
it is important to remember that you don't need to make a six-figure income in the beginning. If this is an eventual goal of yours, that's amazing and you should go for it. But give yourself permission to earn less, especially in the beginning, rather than compromising your vision and your brand for more projects and a bigger sum of money. In the short term, the money might seem nice, but in the long term, your vision and passion is what got you into freelancing in the first place. So you want to make sure that is what you keep at the forefront of your work, even if you're not earning six figures right off the bat. Six, choose work that offers value. The power of working freelance is that you have the power to say yes or no, depending on whether you like the projects and the clients that come your way. If you're offered a project that simply doesn't mesh with what you value, you have the option to pass. This, of course, means taking the time to figure out what it is you value and what type of assignments are meaningful to you personally. Does a particular project excite you? Do you love a challenge or an opportunity to grow in an area where you're less familiar? Take the time to consider your answers to these questions each time you are offered a new project and reflect on what your answers mean and what type of work you are innately drawn toward. There will always be times when you will have to pick up a project you're not as passionate about because you need the money, but it's still important to recognize what type of work you value as you develop your personal brand. Speaking in terms of a minimalistic lifestyle, the quality of projects you accept is more important than the quantity. And seven, don't work too much. When it comes to freelance, it's always either feast or famine. Either you're up to your eyeballs in assignments or you're experiencing a complete drought and need to hustle for new clients. No matter which of these seasons you find yourself in right now, it's important to free yourself up for an effective work-life balance. You want to work hard, but working too hard and too much can prevent you from having time for creative projects and even the important relationships in your life. Try negotiating higher rates to allow yourself time for the other things in your life without having to sacrifice financially. It is hard work to be a freelancer, but that doesn't mean you're required to go overboard. It is possible to live the minimalist lifestyle even in the midst of hectic freelance work. Not only is it possible, but it is important because adopting minimalism as a freelancer will allow you to cut away the distractions and focus on what is most important to growing and scaling your brand. You just listened to the post titled Seven Minimalist Tips for Freelancers by Rebecca Crespo of minimalismmadesimple.com. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever find yourself getting caught up in comparison, seeing the successes of others and wishing your life looked the same? If so, then you know how difficult it can be to manage these feelings. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have, so you can start living your best life. And therapy is for everyone. Even if you haven't experienced major trauma, it's a great place to learn positive coping skills, boundary setting, and personal empowerment, which can have an amazing impact on both your personal and professional life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash workdaily today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash workdaily. When it comes to hiring, don't go searching for the one. Just meet your match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash startup. So just go to indeed.com slash startup right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash startup. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And thanks so much to Rebecca for sharing her work today, and let me tell you a little bit about her because she is a new contributor here. Rebecca is a New York native now living in Spain. She started her journey of minimal living three years ago when she decided to leave the soul-sucking corporate world and fit only her essential items into a small red carry-on to fulfill her lifelong dream of traveling the world. Within those three years, she learned that experiences are her vessels, 
and to be more intentional with the life she leads. Rebecca hopes that her blog inspires you to explore your own journey of minimal living, one that is not defined by others, but rather a journey that is defined by one person and one person only, you. So come by minimalismmadesimple.com for much more. And again, thank you to Rebecca for letting us share her work today. So that's gonna do it for this episode. I thank you so much for joining me and I will see you right back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.